latest patch to Flying Circus released the Fokker D7 and the Sopwith Dolphin last week. While we still can't feel what the final game will be like until the release of the highly anticipated Eras map, these new planes will continue to add more diversity to the early access scene. So without further ado, let's dive in and take a look at these new birds. The D7 has very docile handling characteristics. It's able to hang on its nose for prop hang shots and then fall into a very recoverable stall. Slight side note here, be careful of when you do prop hang or you'll end up like this poor D7 right here. Yeah, never good to do that when there's someone directly behind you. The D7 has great climb rate and good maneuverability. It's not going to outturn the Camel or DR1, but will be very potent with a pilot who knows how to handle energy while mixing tight turns with more energy efficient maneuvers such as chandelles. The nose does tend to bob a bit when firing, but it's nothing you can't get used to. This could be addressed by including response curves in the game, but that's a discussion for another time. Landing the D7 is extremely pleasant. Unlike other World War I aircraft, landing the D7 is very basic with no hidden tricks to watch out for. It's so easy, all you have to do is come in on final, fly close to the ground, and once there, simply cut throttle to idle, pitch the nose up, and watch yourself sink into a perfect three-point landing. I guarantee your squad mates will think you are an absolute pro after doing this in front of them. The D7 has some other very nice perks, such as bullet counters and even a primitive high-altitude oxygen system. The Sopwith Dolphin is a respectable mix between the Sopwith Camel and the Spad 13. It can't turn as tight as the Camel or fly as fast as the Spad because it's not an aircraft that fights well only under specific circumstances. Instead, the Dolphin is the first truly multi-purpose aircraft we've seen in Flying Circus. It has the option to equip four 20-pound bombs, two extra wing-mounted machine guns, and two more upraised guns mounted on the forward cockpit bar. These last guns have limited usefulness in combat as they cannot be tilted down to converge with the rest of the guns. For those pilots who like to take angled guns uh, and shoot during a turn fight or attack enemy aircraft from below, this is a nice option. However, I don't expect to see these being taken into combat regularly because each additional gun you pack increases your weight and decreases your performance. As far as handling characteristics go, the Dolphin is a very stable gun platform so you can count on the nose not bobbing around as you're trying to line up a shot. In his latest article, flight sim blogger Shamrock15 notes, The Dolphin is much easier to fly than the Camel. It's more steady and stable while still having very good overall agility. Roll rate feels average, but once you can achieve a turn-in, the aircraft can be turned tightly and without too much effort. Importantly, and unlike the Camel, the Dolphin can do this in both directions without much difference and there's no need to blip the throttle to get rolling or turning in either direction. However, as you reach stall speed in a prolonged turn, or if you suddenly pull the stick while applying rudder, the Dolphin will punish you by abruptly stalling. If the stall progresses into a spin, you can be in very deep trouble, as traditional methods for getting out of that spin don't really work. Through personal experimentation, what works for me is to reduce the throttle, put the stick and rudder into the direction of the spin, not against, but into it, and then rock the stick back and forth while holding it in the direction of the spin. Um, when my nose starts to dip down, I increase throttle to try and use the increased power to suck my nose into the straight down position that I need to exit the spin. This seems to work most of the time, however, be advised, you'll need more altitude to work with than you might think. If you get caught in this flat spin at low altitude, it might be time to bail out. Oh wait, you don't have a parachute? Good luck with that then. Both of these aircraft were previously modeled in Flying Circus's predecessor, Rise of Flight. Though in fundamentals they are very similar, there are actually some differences between the two simulators. First and foremost, obviously, the planes look much better in Flying Circus. As usual, 1C and Ugra Media have outdone themselves in the modeling department. 
The cockpits in both these planes are a joy to look at, which is a good thing since I plan to be spending quite a bit of time in them. Second, there are differences in flight handling and damage characteristics. The D7 is sturdier than in Rise of Flight. The wings are not as easy to shoot off in Flying Circus as is true with most of the planes released to date. The D7's wings and fuselage will most definitely take damage if shot, but more often than not this will only be in the form of bullet holes harmlessly stitched through canvas. Right now, the best option for taking these planes down is to aim at the cockpit, where you can hit the engine and hit the pilot. Remember, unlike Rise of Flight, it only takes one bullet in the right place to knock out the pilot. Third, the D7 seems to retain energy better in Flying Circus, and, to me at least, doesn't feel quite as anemic as it does in Rise of Flight. In Rise of Flight, the plain old D7 is a bit of a nothing compared to the supercharged D7F. With Flying Circus, this looks set to change. I, for one, will be much more eager to take the standard D7 than I have been in Rise of Flight. Differences aside, there are some similarities to Rise of Flight that are worth noting. In Rise of Flight, the D7 will break up shortly after entering a steep dive, even with the throttle set to idle. In Flying Circus, the D7 actually took slightly less time to disintegrate in a dive. This is in marked contrast to the Rise of Flight Albatross D3, which I'm able to dive from 3,000 meters straight down pretty much without any loss of parts. One would have thought things would have been the other way around. If the D3 ever makes it to Flying Circus, this may be something worth taking a look at. The D7 also retains its hypersensitive engine. I tested both simulators by putting the D7 into an approximately 45 degree angle dive at full throttle. The result was that the Flying Circus D7 did only slightly better, packing on an extra 3.5 seconds before succumbing to damage. The verdict? For now at least, you'll still have to be careful of your airframe and engine in a dive, so fly accordingly. The Dolphin, despite its nasty spin, is actually more docile in Flying Circus in my opinion. I think this is a good thing and might convince some pilots to give this worthy aircraft a shot. Also a huge improvement over Rise of Flight is the removal of the bug that kills pilots if they flip the plane on landing. This made life as a Dolphin pilot extremely annoying back in the day, especially when it killed pilots who lifted their heads from the ducking position after the plane had completely flipped and was sitting at a standstill. Okay, we're coming in awfully hot. Okay, 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 we got this, we got this. Oh, okay, duck, duck, duck. Okay, I'm alive. How about that? I said. One feature I'm glad to see added is damage to the propeller. I'm very glad this has been added as before it was impossible to break propellers in the World War I planes. I think it needs a little work yet as there are no sound effects when this happens. Um, when a spinning pro wooden propeller suddenly hits the ground, there should be a definite crunching sound as it splinters. Speaking of splinters, those would be a really nice animation to have um, in there too. Um, also, uh, bullet damage to the propeller would be nice, but maybe, maybe I'm asking too much. Still... Another very cool effect added is that the cockpit actually shakes when the plane accelerates during a dive. Rise of Flight and Flying Circus are known for capturing the feeling of flight, and this small tweak just makes the experience all that more realistic to me. Finally, they redesigned the machine gun sound effects. This is a move which I tremendously approve of. The guns sound less stale and more tangible when you fire them. Granted, it's a small detail, but it's the small details that sell the immersion, in my opinion. Hey guys, I hope you liked this review video. I intend to do more as future content comes out for Flying Circus. Um, to my Wings of Glory subscribers, I have some good news. My brother and I are currently in the process of creating our latest playthrough, and hope to have it released within the month, so you can be looking forward to that. Anyway, until I see you all again, salute, and blue skies. Hey guys, if you liked what you saw, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the shield in the top left corner. If you really liked what you saw and want to be a part of helping us make better content in the future, check us out on Patreon.
Until next time, thanks so much for watching, and blue skies.